What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tropical Cyclone Jasper rapidly organizing and intensifying as it gets closer and closer towards Australia. Right now, it is near the Solomon Islands, so it hasn't really moved that much in the last few days. However, it is slowly making its trek across the, the, the sea right here and approaching the Australian continent. So we have to all keep a very close eye on it. The area between Townsville and and Brisbane need to be keeping a very close eye on this because this is the most likely scenario of landfall at this current point in time. As you can see with the satellite imagery, we're seeing a lot more of an organized system than we were just 24 hours ago. If we go ahead and go back and pull up 150 frames, this is where we were before. We were starting to see that sign of organization and development, and we were starting to see that, uh, that anti-cyclonic, or rather clockwise rotation, really start to get a hang, of it, a hang of itself. And now we're starting to see a continuingly fast organization period at this current point in time. So so we definitely need to continue to pay attention to this as time continues to go on. It is expected to continue to rapidly intensify and organize in the next few days. Here's the situation we have right here. Its current location is 9.9 .9 degrees south, 158.7 degrees east. Maximum stained winds are now at 55 knots or 65 miles per hour, but we're going to keep it at 55 knots. Minimum central pressure is at 987 millibars, so this thing is continuing to organize and intensify. We are at 996 millibars 24 hours ago. So this thing is really starting to get its act together, and we need to continue to pay attention to it. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center has now put out an official forecast for this tropical cyclone right here. So here's the situation we have right here. In the next in the next 48 hours, it is expected to strengthen up to 105 knots, and which would make it a mid-range Category 3 tropical cyclone through as it approaches Australia. However, it is forecasted to then weaken as it starts to get to the Australian continent, primarily due to the dry air and wind shear, but this thing is still anticipated to bring some potentially large impacts as we continue to move through it. So definitely something to pay attention to, and keep in mind, this is just a five-day forecast. A lot of models are forecasting this thing to be stronger, at least at landfall, than, than the Joy Typhoon Warning Center is at this particular time. Matter of fact, if we, as we were looking at it, this is uh, the earlier forecast had this thing at 105, not, uh, not 105, but 100 knots as a max. Now it's up to 105. So what I can tell is that if that trend continues, we could be looking at a stronger storm than anticipated come towards the Australian coastline. So that's definitely something we need to continue to pay attention to as time continues to go on. The ensemble runs also continue to show uh, that as well, as we're starting to see a potentially st a stronger than anticipated cyclone impacting really anywhere from Brisbane all the way to Townsville. That's really where the landfall uh, spot is between Townsville and uh, Carabas right there. Actually, what's the uh, the town name that's over there? Yeah, Car uh, yeah, Canes. Yeah, Carnes. Or what? I apologize if I'm butchering that, but anywhere from uh, anywhere from uh, from Carnes all the way to Brisbane, you need to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. I'm not sure if it's Canes or if it's Carnes. If you are from Australia, let me know in the comments down below because I do apologize for butchering your names. I'm from the United States, so it's going to take me a while to figure these all these things out. So. That's what we have going on at this current point in time. We really are having a bigger consensus of a potential landfall spot in Australia. And when this thing does make landfall, which is estimated to be in the next six to seven days, we are looking at a potentially lot, a lot of potential impacts as we continue to move through. And we have some even some more models to kind of back that up at this current point in time. Here's the latest from the European GFS, CMC, and the rest of them that we're going to go ahead and show you. Here's the European model showing signs of rapid organization. In fact, we're actually at this current point in time about 6 hours ahead of t uh, ahead of time when it comes to organization and development as this thing starts to slowly approach Australia. So that's one thing we need to keep in mind. But for the future, the European is showing organization and continued rapid strengthening, getting down to 960 millibars as the basically lowest minimum central pressure would be, which would be the equivalent of a Category 3 severe cyclone as it starts to move towards Australia. And from then on out, it gets down to 957, but it kind of stagnates in intensity, primarily due to battling wind shear and some potential dry air that's going to be intruding it. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out but this thing is still forecasted to maintain its intensity 
as it starts to approach Australia. The European is actually making landfall near Keynes as it starts to make uh, starts to make a beeline towards that area, more towards the western side of the cone that really the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and the ensembles are really forecasting. So definitely something to pay attention to. It makes landfall as a 980s millibar cyclone, and then a land interaction rapidly weakens it, and from then on out, it dissipates in northeastern Queensland. To be honest, I don't think it's going to be going that far to the uh, to the west primarily because uh, primarily because the other models aren't forecasting it to do that and the steering currents don't really back that up as much unless there's like a complete failure and there's like a huge high pressure system that starts to build up south of australia or something along those lines so we'll have to pay attention to it for sure but at this current point in time I don't think it's going to be going that far west, but the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, as well as the ensembles, do have it in the in their kind of cone, as I would put it. So we will have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on, or or the yeah, the cone of uncertainty. Joint Typhoon Warning Center does that as well. So. Well, that's what we have going on with the operational. We're going to show you the wind shear as well as the dry air that's going to be going into this. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Here's what we have going on with the European. It does start to interact with some wind shear as it starts to peak in intensity. And then from then on out, the wind shear starts to interact with it and kind of try to tear it apart. And then from then on out, according to the European, the system will move further to the west away from this pretty powerful wind shear. And from then on out, it's going to be the biggest reason why it maintains its intensity because it gets away from that really big wind shear that's exceeding in some areas 50 to 60 knots. So we'll have to pay attention to it. And it maintains its intensity and starts to rebound to the low 980s before land interaction starts to weaken it. And then it makes landfall near Keynes. So we will have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. But if the European forecast is the one that's correct, then I could see a scenario where we see a resurgent uh, system and it start to re-strengthen, primarily due to the insanely warm waters that are over across much of Australia and uh, the area between that and Papua New Guinea. So we will have to pay attention to it as we continue to look, go through the days. Also, we need to pay attention to the moisture component to all of this, the moisture component, the relative humidity. There is a massive area of dry air that is pretty much in front of this system right here. So this is definitely something to continue to monitor as more information continues to come through. And it, we'll have to see how that dry air kind of plays with this whole cyclone because so far... If we go ahead and show you the if we go ahead and show you the water vapor, there's that dry slot true, but the outflow has really been doing a fantastic job of battling it and allowing this thing to continue to organize and strengthen as we continue as the hours continue to go on. We're start we have a clear center of circulation at this current point. Now, a lot of people might look at this at this current point and might see that there may be an eye potentially develop uh, developing in the later frames. We can go ahead and show you that. That's not particularly the eye. The center of circulate uh, the center of circulation is a uh, is definitely there. It's about right here where my cursor is. However, that looks to me more like a dry slot than a potential eye developing. Primarily, and you can really back this up too with the satellite uh, with the satellite as well. If we can go ahead and uh, pull that uh, pull that up, that's the Dvorak. And uh, here's the uh, here's the high res right here. Yeah, there's really not that much of an eye that at this current point developing. That's mainly dry air, but that could be the place where an eye uh, where an eye starts to develop and th this things really start to get uh, get cooking with this cyclone. So we'll have to pay attention to it. But like I said before, and we can go ahead and show you with the water vapor. There's that dry slot down here. However, the storm has been doing an excellent job of organizing and developing in the moist air it does have. And that's going to continue for the next 24 to 48 hours before the dry air even starts to consider trying to penetrate uh, the core. And we'll have to see how that plays out because dry air intrusion definitely can kill off a lot of tropical cyclones for sure. And it looks to me that after it peaks, the dry air and wind shear are really going to start taking its toll. And we see a pretty big dry air intrusion as we get into 96 hours out and as this thing starts to turn to the west according to the European. However, it ends up battling out the wind shear and another moist pocket starts to develop to the south of it, which is what it's likely going to take advan uh, full advantage of it. And then it for some reason pushes further to the north, which I'm going to be honest with you, I don't see really see that happening at that way because unless we see a complete collapse of the steering currents, we're not going to see a cyclone like that move further to the north towards the equator due to the Coriolis force. So... 
We'll have to see how that plays out, but the wind, but the dry air does start to uh, kind of dissipate around the system, so we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on, and as this thing does make landfall, even if this thing holds out and moves and hugs the coast like some models are calling for it, it's still going to be battling some wind shear and dry air, so we'll have to continue to monitor it. Now we're going to go ahead and show you this GFS run, and the GFS has been... Um, among the aggressive models that I've noticed. However, based off what I'm seeing, it looks like the storm organizing and developing, it's kind of following what the G GFS is doing to some extent. The GFS gets down to 952 millibars 54 hours out, which would be equivalent to once again a category th uh, three severe cyclone for those of you in Australia. And then it starts to make its trek down. Dry air and wind shear start to intrude the system. And by the time it does make landfall, we're looking at a 976 millibar system. So still a very powerful tropical cyclone. We're looking at a potential category two cyclone as it makes land uh, landfall near Townsville. But as land interaction usually does with cyclones, it starts to weaken it. And then it eventually dissipates or becomes a remnant low as it moves through the uh, eastern Australia. So that's what we have going on with the GFS. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the CMC. And the Canadian model has been interestingly one of the more conservative models and it was only it was expected to get up to 987 millibars by basically and that basically 30 hours after this run was initiated, which Obviously, that's not going to hap uh, going to happen. It's already stronger than this, but the CMC is having a bit more conservative, getting down to 979 millibars before the dry air and wind shear start to really take a toll in it, before making landfall near Townsville as a 995 or 996 millibar cyclone, and then land interaction weakens, weakens it. That's pretty much the same story that you, you guys have already heard. But the NavGem model, this is an interesting run I want to go ahead and briefly show you guys. The NavGem model... As this thing rapidly organizing and intensifying, getting down to 952 millibars, similar to that of the GFS, except it takes a little bit longer to do that, about 108 hours compared to 54 hours. And if I want to go ahead and see, it, take a look at the wind shear. And yeah, there is wind shear to the south of it, according to the NavGem, but it looks like because it's not penetrating the core and it's not close to that, it looks like it's uh, it looks like it's kind of helping enhance the outflow and help its uh, helping its circulation. So definitely something to pay attention to. Peaks at 950 millibars. And then it starts to uh, approach uh, Queensland, and then it really starts to approach Brisbane as a 964 millibar cyclone, makes landfall in the metropolitan area, and then starts hugging the coast, and p a potential impact towards Sydney is not out of the question if the nav gem is the correct one. And this is definitely a scenario that could potentially play out. However, based off of what we're seeing with the consensus of the other models, it's kind of like we're seeing one of the mo uh, one of the models have it further to the west, two of them have it near Townsville, and then another one has it uh, towards uh, have it, has it towards uh, uh, Brisbane, and then the Icon model, as you can see right here, has it kind of stalling out and remaining in in the, in the sea for the next 120 hours out. If we go ahead and show you the 12Z right here, it's not really showing a, a landfall, so that we can really dismiss that as an outlier. But it's kind of interesting that spread that we're looking at uh, through much much of the models. So. Basically, if you're anywhere from Keynes to Brisbane, you need to be paying very close attention to your local authorities, to the local news, and we'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel as more information continues to come out. Well, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.